we are. What do you think? Well, to the president, I say, no, seriously, who is your pick for attorney general? Because this pick is a middle finger to Democrats and sane Republicans. And it's not being panned only by Democrats, Aaron. My Republican friends in the House are also clowning uh, this pick. They're saying it publicly, as you just read off, but they're also saying it uh, privately. And that was the mood earlier at the Capitol. And, and so, uh, you know, Donald Trump, not known for having a sense of humor. Uh, credit to you. Uh, you landed a good joke on the country. Uh, but this is a position considering what it oversees. Counterterrorism, money laundering, public corruption, child worthy of being taken seriously and also should tell you everything about <clears throat> Matt Gates that he would allow himself to be used by the president to to try and own the libs with something that we know is never going to pass in the Senate. Asked Kevin McCarthy as House Speaker last year. This House has been poorly led. But before that, the man who could become America's top law enforcement official had been accused of serious crimes. The Justice Department investigated Gates over allegations that he violated federal law by paying for sex, including sex with women who were under 18 years old. Gates repeatedly denied any wrongdoing, and last year, the Justice Department announced it would not bring charges against him. One analyst says getting Gates confirmed could be a challenge, even in a Republican-led Congress. This seems destined not only to be a selection that is going to test the loyalty to President-elect Trump, of, of Republicans uh, in the Senate, uh, but that is meant to provoke. The House Ethics Committee has also been investigating Matt Gates regarding allegations of sexual misconduct, illicit drug use, and corruption. But the chair of that committee now says that investigation will end if Gates resigns from Congress to become attorney general because the committee only has jurisdiction over members of Congress. Gates has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing regarding that probe as well. Wolf. Brian Todd reporting. Brian, thank you very, very much. Uh, our chief congressional correspondent, Manu Raju, is joining us as well. Manu, what's been the reaction uh, up on Capitol Hill? Uh, there's no doubt about it, Wolf, that Matt Gates faces a rocky road to be confirmed, even in the Republican-led United States Senate, where they could have up to 53 seats, meaning that they could lose no more than three votes in order to get him across the finish line. And there are far more than three Republican senators who have concerns. In fact, Susan Collins of Maine, one of the moderate Republican senators, said that she was shocked about the, this nomination. But other senators, including on the Senate Judiciary Committee, which will, deter, will take the first crack at this nomination, would have to advance this to the Senate floor. A number of those Republicans on those committees tell me tonight, Wolf, that they are not yet sold, that this is the way to go. And in, one of the reasons why was Gates's role to oust Kevin McCarthy from the speakership and the fact that Gates is under investigation by the House Ethics Committee. The one thing about Matt that concerns me a little bit is I, I didn't like the way he handled the, the, the um, squabble with, with uh, Speaker McCarthy. I, I think it was... Uh, I thought it was unnecessary. I thought it was divisive. Um, I think that the conference suffered, the Republican conference suffered for it. I don't know yet. I think about that. I mean, do you have any concerns about it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, I mean, Trump uh, is following through on his threat to weaponize the Department of Justice, clearly. And that last comment came from a Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee, Alex Padilla of California. But a lot of Republicans, too, also either they're privately expressing concerns or they simply are not supportive of this yet, including Senate Majority, the incoming Senate Majority Leader, John Thune, who was just elected to that position today. He will be in charge of managing the Senate and deciding what nominations to bring to the floor and how to proceed on this. He was asked by our colleague Ted Barrett if he supports this nomination or if he has any concerns about this nomination. He would not go either way yet, simply saying the Senate has the role of advice and consent. So that is where the, a lot of Republican leaders are at this moment, saying they're not certain whether they'll be on, get on board behind this nomination. All right, Manu Raju up on Capitol Hill. Manu, thanks very much. I want to get reaction from our legal and our political experts. And Paula Reed, you're our chief legal affairs correspondent 
these investigations of Matt Gates, where do they stand right now? And what is his, if he becomes the Attorney General of the United States, what does that mean for the Justice Department? Well, Congressman Gates was under investigation for over two years. And for all his talk of, of weaponization by the Biden administration, the investigation to Congressman Gates was opened under Attorney General Bill Barr in the Trump administration. And it went on for a little over two years. They looked into possible... Uh, possible obstruction of justice, questions about improper lobbying. The congressman always, always denied wrongdoing, and he was not charged. Again, that investigation was closed, but the House Ethics Committee is looking into similar issues. And if he was to go uh, for a confirmation hearing, I mean, the subject matter is going to be a little tawdry. I reported on this for several years. We're talking about uh, sex parties, drugs, at least one underage girl. I think that's why you really haven't heard his name in the conversation so far. But just because you've been investigated, right, Hillary Clinton has also been uh, criminal investigated but not charged. It doesn't mean you can't be attorney general, but he's not going to receive a very warm welcome from the career folks there. We've seen people today, uh, our fellow reporters crying, hugging in the hallways. I've gotten sources from uh, text messages from sources, the Trump administration, the Biden administration. No one is endorsing this. What's your analysis, Ellie? This is a crazy pick. This is a dangerous pick. I wish there was a gentler way to say it, but there, there's no use mincing words. I was a prosecutor for a long time. And, and let me be specific as to why. The two fundamental qualities that you need in an attorney general are one, qualifications, and two, independence. Okay, qualifications. Matt Gates has never worked a day in his life as a prosecutor. He has no idea what it means to stand in a court and say representing the United States. He has no idea what it means to indict someone and to potentially take their individual liberty away. He's only practiced law for a few years at the very local level. We've had AGs before. We've never been prosecutors, but they've all had serious positions in the Justice Department in non-prosecutorial roles. Matt Gates is completely unknown to this profession. With respect to his independence, Matt Gates is a firebrand. Matt Gates is the Trumpiest congressman on Capitol Hill. And that's not me talking. I pulled that word for word off of Matt Gates's congressional bio about the congressman. He brags about that. He says he wears that as a badge of honor. He is there to weaponize. And you know, I am not into these doomsday scenarios. I don't buy into them. But as somebody who spent a career at the Justice Department, this is of grave concern to me. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are concerned. Uh, David Chellian, you're a political director. Um, what does it say that Trump decided to select Matt Gates to be the next attorney general? I think it is. Uh, I think it says a lot about Donald Trump uh, feeling pretty good after this election and with his victory and that he uh, didn't hide the ball on this in any way on the campaign trail in terms of not the person, not the name, but the notion of what he wanted to do with the Justice Department, the kind of person he wanted to see as attorney general. Donald Trump has no interest in an independent Justice Department. He's made that totally clear. That, that tradition does not interest him. He wants a Justice Department that will do his bidding, that will go after people that he feel wronged him. He, I mean, he, I'm just relaying what Donald Trump told voters day in and day out on the campaign trail. And I think what we saw here was, and listen, we don't know if Matt Gates is going to get confirmed. He obviously has problems inside the Republican Party, uh, which in the Senate will control this process through uh, the advice and consent role. But we do know that by Donald Trump putting his name forward, this is a marker. Donald Trump wants to have this fight. He wants to have it with his own party. He wants to stick it in the eye of any remnant of the establishment of norm of institutions. And that's what he's doing with this pick. And if Matt Gates is not the pick, this will have been a cloud of controversy through which whoever is the pick will have a much easier time getting fit. And Wolf, I, I was critical of Trump's first AGs, of Jeff Sessions and Bill Barr. I wrote a book critical of Bill Barr a few years ago. But the thing is, both of them had lines they wouldn't cross. Jeff Sessions recused himself from the Russia investigation. Trump never forgave him for it, but it was the right move. Bill Barr mostly operated as a defender of Trump. Most of the criticism of Bill Barr is that he manip manipulated things so he could protect Trump and Roger Stone and others. But what Bill Barr really would not do is use DOJ as an offensive weapon to go after people. And every indication, as David said, is that, is that that's the strategy here. Yeah, and there's no indication that the congressman, based on my reporting on him in the context of a criminal investigation, that he has any line. And he really does feel victimized by the Justice Department, by the FBI. Trump also feels that way. They share that empathy. And really the only check uh, on him if he becomes the nation's top law enforcement official will be the judiciary and 
juries. All right, guys, thank you very much. Excellent analysis uh, all around. Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. For the past week, it was at least a little tiny bit of an open question about how the second Trump administration would govern. I think today we got our answer and that little window has closed. In quick succession this afternoon, Donald Trump announced former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard as his pick to be the National Intelligence Director and sitting Republican Congressman Matt Gates for Attorney General. Well, maybe not sitting anymore, as Gates has apparently already offered his resignation from com Congress amidst his nomination. Now, both of those decisions, along with picking the guy from Fox and Friends to be Secretary of Defense, are, you know, shocking and appalling in their own way. Uh, but the, the Gates pick is really its own thing. Definitely set off alarm bells throughout Washington. You may recall Gates was once investigated by the Department of Justice the very agency he's now being tapped to lead on allegations of sex trafficking. To be clear, Gates denies those allegations. He was never charged with a crime. The takeaway here is obvious. Donald Trump is testing the limits of what he can get away with. Matt Gates is unique in one regard. He is almost unanimously loathed by everyone in the Republican Party, regardless of ideology. That's, of course, in large part because he forced out Republican Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy, Apparently because McCarthy refused to squash an ethics probe into Gates' conduct. At least that's according to McCarthy. Here's how McCarthy later put it. I'll give you the truth why I'm not speaker. It's because one person, a member of Congress, wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he an ethics complaint that started before I ever became speaker. And that's illegal and I'm not going to get in the middle. Uh, Gates denies those allegations, as I said. Uh, the stunt that Gates pulled, which was kicking McCarthy out of the speakership, right, with that vote of no confidence. Um, it didn't make him any friends in Congress. Just listen to Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma just a year ago. This is a guy that didn't have, that the media didn't give a time of day to after he was accused of sleeping. And there's a reason why no one and the conference came and defended him because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and, and, and chase it with, um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. This is obviously before you got married. And so when that accusation came out, no one defended him. Gates denies those allegations as well. But so, folks, I'm not even a huge fan of bipartisanship because often what it means is people on the Democratic Party uniting with the right to pass awful policy. That's normally what it means. But today we're seeing bipartisanship, including people resigning on Trump's side because of this horrendous pick of Matty Boy. And it's only gotten worse since what we've heard, which is that he resigned from Congress. And at first everyone was like, well, the guy is so confident, I suppose he's quitting. Uh, but what if he doesn't get um, confirmed? Then not only is he not AG, he's not um, a congressman anymore. But it turns out he did it likely to effectively quash an ethics investigation that looked into, among other things, absolutely horrendous things he did to, 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 to girls. We're not even talking about adults here, right? Just some awful stuff here. Now, of course, none of this has been proven in court, but very strongly suggesting that he is a perverse individual. And I'm not just talking about his ideological politics. And so you're seeing a mass exodus already. You're even seeing people like Grassley, um, like because you know there's the few senators, your Murkowski's, your Collins. I'm not trying to defend these people; they should be replaced by Democrats. But they were known time to time for voting against Trump. But you're seeing some other people be very, very clear that this is a bridge too far, that this perverse pick has done too much damage, and the exodus is happening. 